Hello, my marvellous sausages! Now, here's a guide on how to get the Malfeasance Hand Cannon. It's a solo guide, too. I've managed to get this completely solo. It's just a, a bit of patience is needed, particularly for the last couple of steps. Now, if you're wondering why it's so good, well, first of all, it's got an unstoppable property, so it's good against unstoppable champions. It's also got a grouping of bullets, so when you shoot them into your enemy, they do a chain explosion, which is excellent. It's really sharp. It's got a, a nice, crisp punch to it and it's also got the added bonus of uh, killing taken a lot more effectively and also gambit invaders so let me show you exactly how you go about getting this wonderful exotic hand cannon from the start first things first you need the forsaken pack so make sure you've bought that otherwise you won't be able to access it secondly you're relying on a bit of rng for the beginning of the quest to drop it drops when you defeat a prime evil in gambit and you get a quest called darkness in the light so once you collect that, you want to go and see Drifter, and then he'll give you step two. This isn't too bad. It's taken bosses or mini bosses in the Dreaming City. Now, you can try Lost Sectors. There's one taken Lost Sector called Aphelion's Rest. It's nice and quick to do, but there's only one taken boss in it. So you can run straight through to the end. You don't have to kill everything. There's some nice shortcuts you'll be able to actually use and navigate your way around to get yourself there quick. Don't forget to pick up your chest and rinse and repeat. Now, you're going to have to do that 25 times, which might seem like a bit of an arse, but there's something better that you can do, and it's a lot more entertaining to make the time pass a bit more easily. It's called the Blind Well. Now, the Blind Well event, uh, you get taken bosses at the end of each phase, or at least you can do. Each week, it changes, and there's three taken bosses at the end. There's these three taken large minotaurs. They, of course, each count as one kill. But at the end of each phase as well, you get these things things called Servants of the Plague. You can see them, the yellow bars, they call the Servants of the Plague. And if you destroy those as well, they also count as a kill for one taken boss. So if you've got the taken blind well event, that's the one to do. I managed to do the whole thing in about an hour, maybe half an hour, something like that. Wasn't too bad at all. That's my recommendations. But of course, if the blind well isn't active, go and do the Aphelion's Rest. It's a lot easier. Or you could do some uh, public events as they turn up as well. Just make sure they're taken and not a scorn one. Now for the next part, you need to do a special version of the Corrupted Strike. You can see there's a marker on the map, which you have to make your way to, and then you start it by interacting with the flag. So this is reasonably similar to the Corrupted Strike, but there are significant differences. First of all, it's quite tricky to do, so make sure you go in with the best build that you can. I used my Strand build with my Osteo Striga. I find this incredibly useful. Give you a, a much needed breather in parts of the strike. But if you can use Devour or you can get some health regeneration in, Void of course is excellent to use as well. But it was whatever you feel confident with. Now for the first section, there are loads of Void shields in there. So you need to make sure you've got a Void weapon in. Of course you can swap over as you're playing. It's not locked loadout or anything like that. So you just need to steadily make your way through but then when you kill the first taken phalanx instead of going through the normal cave entrance you need to go up to the top and interact with the node in order to open the door but be careful as you go up the steps you're going to find quite a lot of enemies up there but there are two important gits that you need to kill there's an ogre and there's also like a captain as well you make sure you need to clear those guys out i just shot from the steps with my osteo striga and it just seeked them out and killed them in the face which was great so once you've destroyed them activated the node you want to keep on following the directions through then you're going to get to a familiar bit it's where you have the orbs to destroy the shields of the taken bosses so some of them can be suspended if you're using suspend, which is quite handy, but some of them can't be because they act as actual bosses. All I would advise you do here is avoid the black sticky stuff on the floor, chuck as many of those orbs at the shields as possible, and clear out as many of the ads as you can as well, because they're going to come around both edges for you. Do you know what I mean? Because it's actually a circular kind of arena that you're in. Suspend comes in very, very useful here because you slow the tide down, but of course you can use whatever you want to get yourself through it. All I would re recommend you in this section is to keep on moving, taking out the ads, and pick and hold your targets. So work on one at a time if you can. Just be careful of them sneaking up on you. It took me about seven or eight goes to do this. So don't lose heart. You will do it. There's two waves as well. So once you kill the first wave of bosses, the lifts carry on, and then another wave spawns in, and then you're down onto the next section. It's actually not as long as the normal strikes. You're doing well if you've gotten past this. 
So once that's room cleared and the lift has settled along the bottom, you've got a shrieker you've got to be careful of. I just ducked and dived around the corner there and just took pot shots until the bloody thing was killed. There's also a few knights as well, so just take your time and keep your cover. Then when you walk into this next room, you can see there's like a Toland type node type thing there. You want to interact with that and then it's going to give you another waypoint to follow. So we're going to be moving around to the next major battle, I suppose you could call it. This room in here, again, go slow take your time that's the way i did it just i didn't die at once on this entire section here just because i was taking my time there's three shriekers make sure you take them out and there's also a lot of knights as well so pot shots as you go and use the rocks and the large crystals as cover and then make your way up the steps to the next part now for this battle, you're fighting two ogres. One's a normal one and one is in the Ascendant Realm. So you swap back and forth between the two ogres. And there's also three shriekers in the room as well and loads of ads. But what I did to get this sorted was just to stay up at the entranceway. Use the cover and there's also two wings. There's one on the right and one on the left. When I say wings, you're like, wings on a stage is what I mean. You can go to them for cover as well if you want to avoid the shrieker fire. So you want to concentrate on the ogres first. First of all, so you want something that's going to pack a punch from a long distance, you can use rocket launchers. I was using my uh, Taipan, but it was just, they're pretty easy to kick in, really. It's not too bad at all. Just hold back and take them both out. Uh, once you've taken out both of the ogres, like I say, stay at that end of the room. You've got the three shriekers to take care of. Now, the way I dealt with those is one on the right, one on the left. I went up the stairs on the right and dealt with that one using the pillars as cover. Take that one out, and then I came back down the stairs stayed at the back of the room so the shrieker at the far end couldn't get me and then uh, I ran across to the left hand side went up used that as cover as well to kill the one on the left and then there's a staircase which takes you to the front of the room which is down on the right hand side I just went my edged my way down that staircase and shot the third one as well and then that room was done not too bad just lean back relax and take your time so normally after this section we carry on going down a big ramp but what we're doing is we're staying in the ascendant realm you come to the way you need to go and you can see there's a little bit of jumpy jumpy stuff to do it's not too hard just jump on the rocks you want to make your way along the left hand side you can basically see which way you need to go because there's dots of enemies lots of taken gits vandals all dotted around the outside that's the path you need to take so just look for your footing and then kill them before you jump do be careful though because they do hit quite hard but it's not it's, it's okay it's okay to get up there you should get up there no problem at all but of course it's very dark being the ascendant plane so eat your carrots and know where you're putting your feet so once you've made your way to the top, we're on to the final boss fight. Uh, now this, it can be quite annoying, but there is a cheese for it, really. Uh, first of all, it's a phalanx. So what they're going to do is the main mode of killing you is blowing you off the edge, which is very, very annoying. But there is a large rocky outcrop behind where they are. It's basically the rock that the uh, indentation, the sort of singed burn outline of the Guardian is. You want to hide around behind there. Because what you can do from there is pop your head out and stick as many shots on the phalanx as you can. Now once you reduce the health bar of the phalanx, you do trigger waves of ads. The first wave of ads is just a general bunch of gits. But what you've got to watch out for, apart from your footing and you don't slip, is the acolytes eyes that appear can appear behind you and to the side of you so use the rock stick that between you and the phalanx turnip and shoot the acolyte's eyes and then keep on popping your way out and shooting him until his health drops down to the last set of bars you know like the final third now what happens when you get to the final third you get some taken wizards appear and one of them kind of stays floating around or at least it did with me stays floating around with a phalanx but the other one shoots out across the chasm and tries to shoot you in the ass which is very annoying so once you get uh, down to that last final third make sure you take out that taken wizard that's behind you or they'll kill you quick then once those two guys are down keep on sticking the damage onto the phalanx and you will eventually get him just be patient and don't pop your head out i mean if you're confident enough in your fighting and you just want to uh, give kick-ins you will give kick-ins but beware 
He can blow you off the edge with his really annoying shield. There are sort of islands that you can jump over to, but if you jump over to those, he will jump over to you as well and then blow you off from there as well. It can be very annoying, so my recommended strategy and cheese is to use that rock and it won't take you too long to do it. And then that's the end of this Corrupted Strike weirdy version. Now the final two steps of this quest are in Gambit. If you hate Gambit, you're not going to have much fun here. But if you like Gambit, it's actually quite enjoyable. Well, sort of. The first step is you need to bank a certain amount of moats and win a certain amount of Gambit matches. Now it's 10 Gambit matches, so that's not too bad. The tricky bit here and the one you really need to concentrate on is banking the moats. Now, with a little bit of experimentation, people are saying it's about 400 moats to bank, which does sound like quite a lot. But I think it's a little bit less than that, because I put in about 10 moats, and that gave me about 3%. So I think it's more like 350, 375-ish moats as well. But here's something you need to be aware of. If you're carrying moats and you get killed and you drop them, that reduces your progress. So, for example, I uh, had 15 moats at one point. And I was about to go and bank it and I got killed. I dropped all 15 and that lost me 4% of my progress. So what I would really advise you do when you're doing this is just concentrate on getting the moats first of all. And it doesn't matter how many you do. When you go to a particular area and you clear that area out, if you've got 2 or 10 or whatever it is, just as you're passing the moat bank, stick them in. Don't worry about spawning in enemies on the other side too much. You just want to get as many moats in as you can. Uh, and it took, it did, t it does take a couple of hours to do that. And then, of course, you've got the wins for the Gambit matches. So that's just the luck of the draw, really, with the team that you're drawn with. But it wouldn't take you too long to get that bit sorted out nice and easy peasy. Now, the final step is the worst step, I think, in the whole thing in lots of ways. First of all, you've got to kill 25 invaders, and that can be anywhere if they invade you or you invade. So that's that one first part of it. The second part of it is an either or situation. So you can either in one match have your ally invade three times and they invade three times and kill all four opposing team members. It doesn't have to be the same ally but they need to kill all four of the other guardian team members in an invasion and that needs to happen three times in a match. That is pretty rare pretty rare and or the other way to do it is for you to invade and then you get the four kills you kill all four of the opposing team now if you're crap at invading i understand completely i'm only kind of middling to ass at it i'm not great at it at all so to give yourself a bit of an advantage, uh, I'd make sure you go in with a full super and loads of heavy ammo. Heavy ammo is pretty prolific in Gambit now. After you clear out each area, you'll get a chest spawn. So you grab a few chests that should max out your heavy ammo. Weapons wise, for me, I was using the Xenophage. That was really, really good. Two shots or three shots, depending on, you know, distance and stuff. Three shots really will kill them outright and it's pretty good at range as well. You could use rocket launchers like the Galahorn or whatever. Just remember, you've only got a certain amount of time when you're invading to do it. And I would just be getting onto the fourth one and then I'd be pulled back. That is incredibly annoying. But once you've done that, once you've killed your fourth, the Malfeasance hand cannon is yours. Now, it doesn't have a catalyst yet. Maybe that's coming soon. No word on that, unfortunately. However, it's an awesome piece of kit. It's incredibly useful. It's so good in Gambit because it inflicts more damage on Guardians and on Taken. And the unstoppable element of it as well is really, really useful. Plus, of course, you get the explodey bullets when you stick enough of them in as well, which is a nice chain reaction. So it's got a good DPS too. All in all, it's a really good hand cannon. Nice and crisp to use. Even good in P. PvP. Let me know in the comments how you found that quest. If you found it a complete nightmare or you found it a bit of a breeze. It's not a breeze really, but it's not too bad. There are worse out there. And don't forget, if you did enjoy the video, a like really helps the video get the eyes on it. That is so incredibly useful for me. And give me a subscribe as well if you want to know the next time I splap one out. New season coming on the way soon, so we'd have lots more goodies then. Thank you so much for watching. And I shall speak to you all again very soon. Sausage et.